Hi everyone, my name is Laura Chevalier and I'm a developer relations engineer supporting the Google Ads API. Welcome to the first episode of our developer series on authentication and authorization with the Google Ads API. Before we dive in, let's take a second to discuss the difference between authentication and authorization, which are two concepts that are often discussed as a single topic. Authentication is determining who you are, whereas authorization dictates what you can see and do, which is usually based on who you are. For example, when you log into your Google Ads account, you provide your username and password so that Google can verify you are the person logging into your account. This is the authentication process. However, your role in the account, such as admin, standard, or read-only, determines what you can do and see within that account. This is that authorization piece. OAuth2 is an industry standard protocol that Google uses to handle authentication and authorization without the need to share private credentials, like a password. With OAuth2, you can retrieve data from or perform operations on behalf of a Google account via the API. This probably all sounds very high level and conceptual at this point, but by the end of this episode, it will make sense how to use OAuth2 to perform authentication and authorization with the Google Ads API. I'm going to run through the OAuth flow process twice. First, we'll work our way backwards, starting with what you'll ultimately need to make a request. Then we'll walk through the full process beginning to end. Let's begin by identifying what you need to ultimately make a request with the Google Ads API, which is our end goal here. You'll need two pieces of information to accomplish this, a developer token and an access token. A developer token is an account agnostic credential to connect your app to the Google Ads API. We like to use a driving metaphor here. You can think of it as similar to a driver's license, which grants you permission to drive a car. However, it's not tied to any specific car. A developer token allows you to make API requests, but doesn't authorize you to make requests on behalf of any single account. Similar to how there are different types of driver's licenses, for example, to operate a car or truck, there are different types of developer tokens as well that dictate how you can use the API. For example, there are different limitations when using a basic versus standard access token. In order to create a developer token, head over to the API Center in a Google Ads Manager account and follow the instructions. If a developer token is like a driver's license, an access token is like a car key. It allows you to access a specific account. However, Access tokens are short-lived and typically last one hour. So in our example, this would be a car key that only works for about an hour. Not a great car key. In order to get an access token, you'll need a client ID, client secret, and a refresh token. In order to obtain a client ID and client secret, which are credentials for a specific cloud account, open your Google Cloud project or create a new one if you don't already have one. Then head to the APIs and Services section, navigate to Credentials, and click Credentials. Select OAuth Client ID and follow the instructions. It's important to note that you must enable the Google Ads API in the library of the APIs and Services section. A refresh token is a credential to generate new access tokens. So as I'd mentioned earlier, access tokens are short-lived, not great car keys, which is why we need long-lived refresh tokens. In order to obtain a refresh token, you'll need to go through the process outlined in the diagram below. Not to worry, that diagram looks more confusing than it is, and I'll walk through how it works. First, you'll use the client ID and client secret to generate something called a request token. That request token is used to generate a URL where a user can log in with their Google account. Upon doing so, you'll receive an authorization code, which you can use to retrieve a refresh token in a subsequent request. Using that refresh token, you can then generate an access token, which can be ultimately used to make API requests. This sounds like a lot of work to issue a single request, but keep in mind that many of these steps are abstracted away when using the client libraries. 
making the process easier. We'll demonstrate how to complete this process in different ways in subsequent videos. We now have everything we need to make a request, so let's recap that process from beginning to end. First, create a developer token in the API center of a Google Ads API Manager account. Next, create a Google Cloud project if you don't already have one. Then, enable the Google Ads API in the API library. Create a client ID and client secret in the Google Ads project. Use your newly created client ID and client secret to generate a refresh token following the flow we outlined earlier. Now you're ready to generate an access token using your client ID, client secret, and refresh token. As I mentioned earlier, the client libraries would handle this piece for you. However, here's a sample curl, curl request to generate an access token. Finally, issue your API request using your developer token and access token. That was a lot of information, and we'll definitely break this down in future episodes. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, that's all good and well, but what's actually happening here? And where does the authentication and auth authorization piece you spoke about at the beginning of the episode come into play? Let's break down that OAuth flow magic now. I kind of breezed through this earlier, but in the OAuth flow diagram I showed you, I mentioned that the request token is used to generate a consent screen that a client can use to log in. On the right of this slide, you can see an example of this consent screen. Just prior to this, the user would have logged in or authenticated with their email and password. On this page, they authorize an application to make API calls on their behalf. But that still doesn't explain what an access token generated with this flow can actually do. This slide is kind of the bread and butter of this episode and where so many people get tripped up. This is what ties this whole process together, so pay attention here. The permissions that an access token has are directly tied to the permissions that email on the Google, that email has on the Google Ads account. As you can see on the left, we authenticated with the email address user at email.com. If we head over to the access and security page within our Google Ads client account, you can see that the user with user at email.com has admin access which means the access token generated by this flow will have that same admin access. Similarly, if the user that you authenticate as is a user on an account that is a manager of that client account, that access token can also make requests on behalf of that client account using the login customer ID request header. Now that we understand the basic flow of OAuth and how to use it to make requests with the Google Ads API, Let's look at the different options or OAuth flows that we have to go through this process. There are three different types of OAuth2 flows. The desktop app flow is used for applications installed on devices like phones, tablets, and computers. The web app flow is used for web server applications. These two flows are very similar, the main difference being that desktop or installed apps must open the system browser and supply a redirect URI to handle responses from Google's authorization server. Finally, the service account flow is used for accounts that belong to your app instead of relying on an individual user. In these cases, no human intervention is required. We're going to focus on the desktop and web app flows because the service account flow is discouraged unless you have a specific case that necessitates its use. The desktop app flow is the recommended approach because it's the easiest to get started with. You should use this if you're managing all of your Google Ads accounts using a single top-level manager account, are a first-time user, want to get started quickly with the simplest setup, or if your app will only authenticate users from one machine. On the other hand, you should use the web app flow if you want to authenticate as a user who can grant permission to your app to access their Google Ads account data or easily generate multiple authorization credentials. In addition, if your app requires callback URLs, you must use the web app flow since callback URLs are not supported with the desktop app flow. I know that was a lot of information to take in in a short amount of time, 
So if you'd like to take a deeper look at your own pace, I'd suggest checking out the quick start and authentication guides from our developer documentation site. I hope this episode has been helpful in demystifying authentication, authorization, and OAuth2 for you. However, keep in mind that this is just an intro. In future episodes, we'll be walking through the OAuth process using a variety of different methods and OAuth flows so that you can see how this works in action. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can catch the rest of the episodes in this series. As always, we welcome you to reach out with any questions via our support channels. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.